What's up everyone? It's Jeremy here with Majors Academy Dog Training and uh, this is the video to the questions that uh, came on Saturday. Sorry I couldn't get it to you earlier. It's been a little crazy around here with um, uh, a lot of clients uh, asking for training and we're also moving into a new location. Uh, same here in Green Bay. So we'll uh, we'll just move probably six or seven miles west of the current location we're at so anyway um sorry for the scruffiness uh it's the week of valentine's day i'm kind of waiting until i get cleaned up towards the end of the week so sorry for the scruffiness uh but anyway we'll jump right into it and uh get these questions answered for you again i apologize for doing it so late i hope all of you guys can see this video um, so you can get your 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 uh, your questions answered. Okay, so the first question comes from Paulina, and um, she goes, "Hi there, my boyfriend and I have recently been having an issue with our two-year-old Boomer displaying aggression to toward our 13-year-old Lab Bear last night, or our Lab Bear." Last night, I gave Boomer one of those dentist sticks to chew on. Bear had gotten a different treat as he is not a fan of the dentist sticks. After chewing on the dentist stick for a little bit, Boomer became disinterested in it and let, and let it sit between his legs. When I noticed he wasn't eating it, I decided to take it away from him. Instead of using my hand, I, tick, I kicked it about two feet away with my foot. It happened to land right next to Bear who didn't even notice it, but it made Boomer extremely angry. He attacked Bear with all of his might and knocked the poor old man on the ground. It took all of my strength to pull Boomer off of Bear and stuff him in his crate. Luckily, Bear only had a little nick from his ear from the whole ordeal, but it was terrifying. But it was a terrifying experience. Boomer has never acted aggressively towards other animals in this manner before. He does tend to get jealous when we are giving attention to bear or our cats though when that happens we typically push boomer away and continue giving our attention to the other animal we've always made sure to feed bear first and let bear out of the door first uh, when they do go out to potty i'm not sure what brought on the sudden aggression in boomer last night but i'd like to prevent it from ever happening again can you help me i sure can belina and thank you for for asking a question um, so one thing I want one thing I want to point out that you're doing correct right away is um, attention giving many dogs can get jealous in that situation and get a little antsy and it's good of you to push uh, push boomer away uh, because you should give you should be able to give attention to your dogs individually and without any problems because a lot of people do have uh, issues when it comes to giving attention to one dog and then the other dog getting jealous. So you're doing good that, uh, on that front. Um, so with Boomer, it might be he's he's he, you know he's two years old and he's and he's probably coming into the age where he thinks, okay, you know, I want to test my boundaries a little bit with the with the older dog now and so you might see a little bit of um, challenging that goes on between the two um, because it's just pack mentality that's just what happens but what you can do again uh, overall is you know let boomer know that that was not okay um, uh, first and foremost bones you know, if you've got them, if you want to give them to your dogs, do it in a separate room uh, for now. And um, so you can kind of prevent anything from happening. Um, for me, with my dogs, I still, you know, they've known each other for maybe about two years now. But I don't think I'll ever, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to give them something really nice that they really like and invested in, I'll do it separately. Um 
you know, I'll, I'll give them their own space just so, you know, I can eliminate any potential uh, problems, resource aggression or whatever. I just go ahead and do it. And I'm also um, always on the lookout when, when we play to with, with toys together. You know, um, it's, it's something to always just kind of keep an eye on. So um, I hope that uh, your dogs are, are uh, at least getting along outside of that. Um, because if not, you know, you might want to consult, uh, uh, get some help from some pro professional help because, um, there may be some things that you may be missing between the two. Um, but, you know, for now, I would definitely just, if you want to feed them some good stuff, uh, some things that they might get resource aggressive over, just do it separately. And, um, make sure you just keep an eye on, a uh, Boomer. When it comes to uh, you know petting bear or your other animal, um, you know make sure you know if Boomer even thinks about it that uh, you know he has he gets a consequence for that. Um, one of the things I tell people all the time is um, correct correct the thought uh, before it becomes the action. So you can ha you knowing your dogs you know. The look kind of boomer gives you before he you know even gets to that point where he gets jealous or comes in between you two trying to get attention when you're giving attention to bear um so even when he's just approaching you guys you should give him a consequence on that um but overall you know i think um boomer needs to be able to listen more uh because um, I can do that with my dogs and nothing happened, be but I have to be watching them. I want to be watching them so that I can, again, uh, you know, tell them no and they, and, and, and they'll listen to me. So, um, overall, Boomer should always be listening to you first and foremost, no matter how he feels about any other dog. But secondly, try and go ahead and prevent it by keeping them separate. Let the old man have his bone or whatever, uh, on its own. And let him enjoy that. And and bear if he doesn't, or uh, excuse me, if Boomer if he doesn't want the the bone or whatever, then pick it up for him. Okay. I hope that helps, Polina. Thanks for your question again. Okay, we have a, another question from Susie, and she says, "Hi, Jeremy. My my Emma was a rescue from." Mitt Lab, German Shepherd Dog Rescue. She's almost eight, and I've had her for about nine months. She's a good girl and knows basic commands. I work with her daily to reinforce good behavior. The only issue I have is she barks excessively when someone rings the doorbell. Comes to the door, she does not do it in an aggressive manner. She just gets excited, tail wagging like crazy. I do want her to bark when someone approaches. Prior to Emma, prior to Emma, I had a stalker break into my house, so. So I greatly like the fear factor she puts out there. However, I would like to train her to to bark to alert, but then stop and sit waiting to be approached. Am I asking too much? I work out of my home and keep training treats in the pocket. When someone comes to the door, she's barking like crazy. I'll make her sit, give her a treat, a good girl, then open the door and it's all over. The barking continues until the guest's customers pet her. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Okay, Susie. Um, so, um, she's so you've had her for nine months. Um, you know that is some sub substantial time, but it's still not enough time. What I would do with the doorbell um, is is um, take those basic commands that she knows, um, teach her a really solid down stay, right? And put her bed somewhere in the living room um, so she, so that she can see the door. And practice the doorbell with no one coming in. You know, uh, go back to making it real simple for her. Make it seem like, you know, um, the doorbell is not a big deal. So when people come in, uh, she, has, she would have heard the doorbell over and over and over again. And she reacts less because she's seen that picture so many times so 
I would just practice if you're home all day it's perfect I would put her in a down and I would knock on the door um, uh, ring the doorbell you there's even a, uh, a YouTube uh, thing that plays the doorbell sound for as long as you want I mean hours of just doorbell ding dong um, so you know this is kind of making it less of a big deal for her and because like I said my dogs I do it so much uh, they don't even get up off their bed they just they continue sleeping and some so when guests come over that's what happens they just stay on their bed until I invite them to greet the to greet the uh, to greet the dogs now this is not going to um, stop your dog from barking and I don't want I don't want you to 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 uh, to get that idea because I think a lot of people want their dog to bark um, but they just don't want them to bark when they don't when they don't want the dog to bark so um, again what I would do uh, is teach her that down stay and reinforce it as she tries to get up put her back in that place do it again and repeat that process um, so when guests do come over she will she will still bark but you can say go lie down or go to your bed and she goes to your to her bed and she lies down so you definitely want to teach her a down stay uh, that that really is solid I mean you should be able to put your dog in a down walk in and out of the door um, knock on the door come in and she's still lying down because you put her there so you that's what you really want to do with with Emma teach her that solid down stay practice uh, you know every day with the doorbell with the knocking with even you know simulating someone coming in with a high voice one of the exercises I do for dogs that are reactionary to doorbell is again we teach them that place command or the downstay I come in and I'm like hello how are you hi you know just how guests would kind of um, go about it you know so um, he them hearing uh, that sort of same kind of uh, thing and, and, and seeing that same picture makes it less of a thing for them now that tail wagon too you know it could be a, in, an insecure thing um, so sometimes it's not necessarily that she's excited you know because she still could be nervous about the situation overall what you have to do is basically show her um, that you know she has she doesn't have to be necessarily that protective or show her when it's in it's appropriate um, you want to have the ability to tell your dog to go lie down when in that moment and they actually do it but it starts with practicing that down stay and then after that practicing going through the door knocking the door and and uh, knocking on the door and then ringing the doorbell okay thank you very much for your question and I hope that helps okay the next question comes from Mary Beth. Um, she says, "My shepherd stalks cars slash trucks, etc. When we are walking, uh, when we are walking, as soon as she hears slash sees a vehicle coming, coming, her head goes down and she goes into a stalking position. If I didn't shorten the leash, she'd probably lunge at them. Any help would be greatly appreciated." Okay, so. Uh, one of the things you you uh, want to, to assess is whether the dog is being a little fearful because they can display fear by um, that stalking posture or or she just wants to kind of is it a playful more I want to play type thing um, but either way what you want to do is um, um, develop a better conversation with your dog on leash <clears throat> um, so what I think you should get is a prong collar or a training collar we only use um, the German brand it's called Herm Springer uh, you can look it up on Amazon they're much better than the ones you can get at Petco or PetSmart um, and they're much easier more user friendly and better for your dog excuse me um, so one of, one of the things you want to do again is develop a good conversation at, uh, during those times because your dog should just be walking with you. I tell people uh, on the walk, 90% of the time she should just be walking with you, uh, 
beside you in a good heel 90% of the time. The other 10% they can pee and poop and sniff, but the majority of the time they should just be walking no matter what's going on. And um, if it comes from a place of fear, then it's even more important that she walk by your side in a good heel um, so that she can get over that fear because some dogs do fear that. It's a retreating object. It's a Sometimes it can be a misunderstood object for dogs. And so it's important for us to kind of show them that, you know, that's something you don't have to react to uh, by a way of stalking. So definitely um, try to improve your conversation uh, on the walk. Again, she should be walking by your he walking by your side. No sniffing, no pulling, no peeing, just walking freely in a nice heel. And um, uh, you'll see that improve. Okay, thanks, Barry. Thanks, Mary. Okay, next question comes from Dana. Dana says, Susie, Susie's dogs bark. My, my almost doesn't at all. Mine almost doesn't at all. He's about six or seven years old. Uh, adopted about 10 months ago. And barked maybe five times since. Once at a passing, once at a passing dog behind our yard. Twice at a worker checking meters twice at my husband coming coming from work and opening the door with his keys never when strangers ring the ring or knock on the door i tried to teach him to bark on command but cannot make him bark so cannot reward it okay um so i'm not sure what your question is let me try to read it again Susie's dogs, Susie's dog barks. Are you talking about Susie Reynolds' dogs? We'll have to, I'm going to conversate with you on uh, Facebook because I want to uh, make sure we get, I'm not quite sure what you, uh, what you're asking, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll conversate on, uh, on, on Facebook so we can get that, get your question answered. Okay. Next question comes from Pat. Uh, working on long-term problem with coach. Both dogs are, are in their crates in the study. Coach is by the door. Um, dog walker comes and takes coach out, walks, and then puts him away. Then Reggie then goes to get Reggie out. Coach goes ballistic, charging and barking as Reggie walks past. Okay, Reggie... Okay, FYI, Reggie does not egg him on. Coach usually, Coach's usual working level is 4 to 7. A 25 had no effect on him on stopping him. How do I find the right level? And do I say anything quiet when I'm working this? Great question, Pat. A lot of people struggle with this. What I would do is bump it up to about 60. Okay, because um, in that moment, Coach is still feeling like you know he is allowed to do that behavior and knowing you guys and working with coach and Reggie um, I think coach just feels entitled there's no fear going on with him he just doesn't like I almost think he he's almost getting a little jealous that he can't be out right now too and he takes it out on Reggie so what I would do is knock it off I would tell I would bump it up to 60 and try it there and if not go up from there um, because what you what you don't want to do is continue to uh, go at lower levels and get no results um, what you want to do is get that high level out of the way and then you can work through those low levels he just has to know that you're for real about it so go up high and then we can work back down low but um, 25 is is probably nothing in that moment because he's adrenalized in that moment so uh, their their tolerance goes up pretty high um, in those moments. So working level is out of adrenaline, and um, you'll have to find that level. Uh, and I like I said, I would say I would bump it up to sixty, and then work down from there. Be but he just has to know that that's not okay, and um, you probably won't have to do it again. Okay, Pat. Thanks for asking. Hope I get to see those guys soon. Okay. I think that's all from um, 
from Facebook, I got one Instagram uh, question to answer. And this is from user less is more 32. And the question is, an adopter called me recently and wanted to know what else they could possibly do to get their new dog to stay in his crate and reduce anxiety while they're gone. He is in a wire crate and uh, with slide and lock front uh, with slide and lock front door and even with zip ties, the dog breaks out of his crate uh, by thrashing his body to the sides until it collapses. He is nine months and less than 25 pounds. They've tried putting him in the kitchen with a double stack baby gates and he can scale it and it's destructive. They have tried putting him in a crate with positive reinforcement while they are home for short spurts and he does fine until they leave. They have filled his crate with a, a variety of tasty long lasting treats but bones won't treats slash bones but he won't touch them when they're gone. They have an older resident dog who is house trained and not caged. They have tried exercise before the crate and it makes no difference. Thunder Jacket also does not work. Is there more to that question? Hmm. Um, okay, I'll just go ahead and quickly answer that question. Um, one of the things I do, I think they're doing good when it comes to uh, crating the dog while they're there. I think that's going to be huge. But let's do this. Um, uh, first and foremost, I don't know if they're doing this or not, but I'm just going to say it. And just in case, you cannot talk to your dog in an excited manner while they're in the crate. You cannot say hi to them. The only thing you should be saying is quiet and no in the crate. Um, because you do not want to get them excited in the crate. The crate should just be a time of calmness and um, and peace. So one of the things that we could do for this dog is get him some exercise um, first. Um, take him on a long walk uh, and then put him in the crate while you guys are there. Um, and this will give you an opportunity to fix the 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 crate anxiety uh, i just i have a dog in my crate now or excuse me in my kennel now who tried to destroy my crate twice and i have to condition him to be in the crate um because all dogs are can are crate trained in my house so one of the things that i did was spend a lot of time with him in the crate and as soon as he got antsy as soon as he started whining then I, I have to give him a correction, um, which is a quiet, or you can um, uh, put a leash, a leash and a prong collar on, and stick the leash out of the crate, and give him a, a, a leash correction, and and say quiet at the same time. Or um, you could also get a pet convincer, uh, which is a little thing that squirts out uh, little things of air, um, little doses of air, and it sounds like psh, sounds like that. Um, you can get that on Amazon as well. Um, but, um, you know, you definitely have to spend some quality time in the, in the house with him in the crate, um, where, where you have the opportunity to correct his behavior immediately, um, before it gets to the crashing and the thrashing. His thoughts should be corrected. Um, you know, I encourage these people to you know if they have some problems uh i think i encourage these people to contact a professional because they um you know uh, the dog sa sounds like he's pretty much really unruly and at nine months you know that dog should have some you know that dog should really really get some solid boundaries uh and, and some training in because he's a young guy um so again let me reiterate because this is important Great time, more crate time than freedom at this point. The dog needs to be in the crate when he's in the house. Um, no freedom. Uh, the freedom could be outside. Take him on a long walk. You have to put things very structured right now. So I would reset to taking him on two or three walks a day. And then when he's not on a walk or he's not outside, maybe if you're in your backyard playing around, he's inside and he's in your crate until, until he's really, really calm in that crate. 
He has to be. Um, and it starts by, again, when you come home, you can't say hi to the dog. Um, you have to, um, you have to ignore the dog or tell him no to help him through that separation anxiety. You know, you, you, he has to be less anxious to see you all the time. Um, it's, it's cute to be, to, for your dog to be happy, but it's not healthy because the result is a dog that has, that can have or develop, um, separation anxiety. So no treats are going to help out with this situation. No bones, uh, none of that, it, you know, you have to, to, to address the state of mind, which is, um, I want to get out of this crate when you guys are gone. Um, and I can because it's worked. So, you know, now you're dealing with a little bit of an uphill battle, but it, it can be solved because I do it all the time. Um, you can even purchase an airplane crate, which might work better. Um, because he might not be able to get out of it as opposed to the wire crate. So, uh, definitely crate time while they're home, but correct the, the whining, the, the whining has to be corrected and it may take a while, you know, um, it's a, like I said, it's an uphill battle because it's worked for him. Um, and the longer, uh, that it has worked for him, the longer it's going to take to, to, to get to uh, to get fixed um so uh good luck with that i think um i think obviously he, him being so young it can turn around quickly but we do have to be consistent and i the rule of thumb with me is if the dog's peed and pooped um and ate and has water um then generally he should be fine in that crate you know he should not be whining they should not be scratching or anything they should just be relaxing because we want that to be a time of relaxation in the crate. Okay. I hope that helps, guys. Uh, we'll be trying to do this uh, every Saturday. Again, you know, um, I apologize for the delay of the questions. Um, we are in the process of moving. And, uh, again, I have um, quite a few dogs um, that are inquiring about training. And so it's been a little crazy, but good. And uh, so... Anyway, we'll do this next Saturday, and I hope to see you guys ask some more questions. Thank you so much, and I hope this helps. See you next time.